Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we have brand new system, so I apologize. I have a new microphone, I have a soundboard, and a bunch of things I'm still trying to figure out here. Um, but today we're going to answer a subscriber's question. It's really going to come down to like big bank versus small bank. Um, I'm going to say this is going to be quite similar to big firm versus small firm. So you're thinking like, what's the difference here? Uh, I typically only talk about the banking side or I have a skew towards the banking side because I've spent my entire career on the banking side. Uh, many people are going to be wondering about this from a perspective of like a hedge fund or an investing firm. So these things will probably still apply, but let's just dive on in here to the question quickly. And then I can give you kind of an example here of what's going on. Okay, so the question really comes down to, you know, they mentioned that I have a video discussing how I left my master's in financial engineering and I transferred into a master's of applied economics. Uh, the reason for me making that jump, that switch, is I didn't like the way the program is structured. Uh, I thought that it went way too fast on the material in the sense that you're not really going to be learning everything kind of from like a first principles kind of build up and really knowing this. Now, part of this is on me academically. Uh, I have a finance background, so my math skills definitely were not up to par with many of the other students who had engineering, math, and computer science degrees. So part of this is on me. So it's just not a good fit for me. The other part though I didn't like about this was that they crammed in these programs to be like a professional training course, meaning you were taking six courses in a semester. So if you're not familiar with the academic structure in the United States, I believe Europe follows the same structure here. You spend three to four classes per semester and you dive really deep and you should have a significant amount of homework to the point that you can't do more than three to four classes, okay? So the fact that a program has six classes is just built like an MBA. Uh, it's a professional degree. It's designed to like bring in a bunch of students, churn them out very quickly, give them high level views, which is fine for different jobs, and then spit them out. And one of my big complaints on this is that I wasn't really learning the material very well. And I would argue many of the students in the programs, even those that are extremely well prepared, didn't really get a full, deep understanding of many of the concepts. And I also understand from a academic perspective, right, you can only learn so much information in so much time. So that was why I switched. They go on to ask here in the question too, though, you know, basically like they're at a job right now. Um, they feel like they're not really learning a lot. It seems very mundane and very repetitive. And they don't feel like they have a lot of time to do self-learning at their current job. And so they're kind of wondering, does the advice of my educational master's decisioning apply to a career? And then more or less, you know, like what should they do about it? Should they quit their job? Should they go work for a smaller firm? Um, they're also going to be asking a little bit here, you know, they currently work at a top tier firm. They want to go to that smaller firm, but they also want to know like what can they do in their current time to get the most out of this firm? Okay, so to unpack the answer to this, I think is quite challenging. Um, different banks have different cultures and size does play an impact, but it's not going to be like the sole decision of big banks are, you know, super busy and small banks are super slow. Um, so I, one, I don't like jumping jobs without another offer lined up. So I highly discourage this unless you have like, I don't know, an absolutely nightmare terrorist like situation and you have to get out. Uh, I get it. Just jump. But for most people, right, it's the job's not enjoyable. It's not what you really wanted. I would really consider uh, just start looking for another job and really focus here on this situation, on the culture and figuring out like how busy and what the work life balance is going to be like. So most big banks are going to work you pretty hard. So this is a fair assumption on, you know, the question here. Uh, bigger banks, I've avoided some of them because I know the work-life balance. I know the structure. Uh, when you get, though, to very large banks, you get individuals that become very, very specialized in very specific areas. Um, so, for example, if you work even like you think credit risk is like a specialization, uh, they go even further than that. So you will have like credit risk, but you might be like the automotive expert or you might be like the mortgage expert. And even within that, you might only touch a handful of those models inside of mortgage, for example, and you might be that really true expert on that topic 
doing model development or model validation, some sort of quant work here. So the big firms are going to be very specialized. You'll learn a lot. Uh, the advantage of working at a big firm is the name on the resume. And I know this sounds really odd. I don't think it makes a lot of sense sometimes, but I, I'm starting to understand this more so as I'm jumping around. When you work at a big firm, there's just a lot of systems in place, which you usually don't realize. And your job is quite easy, but you don't understand that from the governance and operational side. Uh, when you go to smaller firms, I've noticed they just don't have that structure. They don't have a well-developed team that's putting together uh, all the processes to make your job as a validator or a model developer super easy. So you're going to have to realize when you go to a smaller firm, you will most likely get better work-life balance. Uh, you will have more time to self-learn. But at the same time, you're not going to get the exposure to other experts in the field. So typically the large banks have these really specialized super experts in very specific areas and having that expertise, learning that expertise, being there is very crucial. So while you were there, if you're still there and you're going to be looking for a job, really focus down on what you're doing. So I know it seems mundane. I'm guessing here, I'm just pulling at straws and whatnot, but if you're working, for example, in one very specific area, learn from the colleagues around you, especially those that have been there for 10, 15, 20 years, because they will know a lot more of the nuanced details, which don't seem very exciting. They don't seem very important. And yet those are going to be the things that make and break like top quants and like generic quants versus people that just work in these industries that don't care. And I wouldn't really consider quants. So when you're there, make the best of it. Focus on your work. I wouldn't worry about self-learning when you're slammed at work. Um, you'll students will find this out. It's kind of disappointing uh, when you get into the industry and you're a real expert, there's typically not time to do self-learning. Like I'm being paid to do X, Y, and Z. They pay me really good money to do it. But that being said, they're going to expect, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. And that's just what it is. Now, again, if the learning part makes you happy, it's a career focus of yours. So I complain internally to myself constantly like, ah, I just wish I had more time to study. I have textbooks. I'm doing textbooks for reviews. I'm doing YouTube. I have a child. Like when you start getting into the industry, you start to realize there's not a lot of extra time, which is why people that have worked for five, 10 years, they look at me and go, Dimitri, you're absolutely crazy. Like, I don't know how you have time to do YouTube, your day job, and then you have a daughter and a wife. And then you're on top of that, you're building a, you know, 28 by 40 garage studio. Like this doesn't make any sense. And I don't encourage this. Do not work like crazy hours and be like nuts like me because it's not very healthy for you. But if you want to focus on that, again, when you're at the big firm now, get the, the name on the resume. I don't know how long you've been there. I would at least try to get at minimum one year. Uh, if you can get a couple years in though, it just looks good to have that. And that will always follow you like, oh, you worked at this top tier bank. So that's the benefit. That's what I would do. Just focus on the job. Don't worry about self-learning at this point, right? You're, you're not going to have a lot of time. Uh, don't overstress yourself out. Now, if you're considering the big bank versus the small bank or the big firm versus the small firm here, uh, realize every firm is going to be different, but size does matter. Uh, smaller firms, you'll have more freedom, typically more work-life balance. But at the same time, you're going to be lacking a lot of the structure and you'll lack a lot of expertise because people that work there, even those that have worked 10, 15, 20 years, if they haven't worked at the big banks or a big firm, uh, often they're just missing the expertise. They're missing, I don't know, the real specialization that you learn from working at these big banks for so many years. And I know it seems very depressing sometimes when you're stuck in a bank or in an institution for many, many years. And it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere. Like you're an individual contributor at, you know, like an analyst level, and then you're an associate, and then like a senior associate, and then like associate vice president, and then a vice president. And then you look back and you realize like, oh man, I've, I don't know, spent 10 years in a career and I don't feel like I'm making any progress. So I get it. I understand where you're coming from here. If learning is something that makes you happy though, career wise, realize you probably will make less money at a smaller bank, but for that trade-off, you'll be working less hours and you'll have a better work-life balance. So those are my kind of two cents on this, right? There, guys, there's pros and cons. You can always go back to a big bank or a big tier fancy firm, but it's much easier to do that when you're already in those kind of top levels and then transitioning down into a smaller bank. I don't know. My first job, I think, was like <laughs> far better than I ever imagined that it actually was when I was there because I had so much time to do self-learning and to do my job 
and everything was just clicking so well. But again, I left there to go to New York City and there's other big dreams in the way. And again, the compensation at these smaller firms and banks is going to be less than what you would get at a, you know, top five, top 10 global banks. So anyways, that's, that's kind of my perspective on this. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you have more questions or if any of you have questions, um, just throw them in the comments below and I will try to make a video on them when we get some time. Anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.